Hello, welcome into another edition of State of the Sun Devils alongside Damon Allred and Jesse Morrison. I'm Jeremy Schnell, a 35 to 31 victory for Arizona State over UCF today. Seven and two record, Jesse. They won a game where, you know, it wasn't so pretty on defense, Damon and Jesse, but they got the job done, 35 to 31. They did. ASU remains undefeated at home. Uh, exciting stuff. Uh, the thing that stood out to me in this game is exactly what we talked about on the pregame show today, which was there had to be other guys step up on offense and the team in general, but other guys step up on offense. I mentioned Jordan Tyson. I mentioned Shaman Mater. Both of them made impacts with Cam Scadaboo out. And that, that really stood out to me. And then, obviously, the play on special teams and the uh, the interception pick six. Yeah, both plays on special teams. You got the block punt, and then you got the brain fart, I would say, by the UCF player who ran back to the half-yard line, and then that led to the pick six. I want to start with Jordan Tyson, though. He made a, a drop in, in the first half uh, where you're like, oh, you wish he had that one. And then he just went ballistic in the second half, Damon. Yeah, it really felt a lot like that Kansas game where he had the drops in the first half and then made the two touchdowns in the second half to pull ASU ahead of Kansas. Kind of the same thing happened today where he makes the two second half touchdowns and it really pulled ASU out of a rut in terms of like the offense just was not working as well as it has in the first half. And without Cam Scadaboo, you really looked for like Jesse was mentioning, someone to step up. And Jordan Tyson did such an amazing job on the first really amazing catch that he had, the one on that sideline. We saw him just minutes before practicing those acrobatic catches on the sideline during a commercial break with Melquan Stovall. And it immediately paid dividends as he was able to get that catch on the sideline. And then the two touchdowns that he had as well. I mean, just incredible effort from him today. And I do want to point out, uh, you know, you mentioned that defense didn't have the best performance today. They did come up when they needed to. So that pick six that you met, that we talked about, and then at the end of the game, the fourth down stop that was the play of the game other than that pick six on defense. So they made some plays when they had to. wasn't their best performance. I think it's impossible to stop R.J. Harvey. They were doing a good job of that, and then they weren't just – flat out weren't that guy is insane I think he might be the one from the big 12 that you might want to get in New York uh but overall just uh I, I thought that those two plays kind of made up for a relatively lackluster defensive performance well, two guys from the big 12 with uh Hunter as well but oh yeah that's right <laughs> but three touchdowns for Harvey today I, I do want to touch on a little bit that final uh stand by ASU before um they, they got the turnover on da downs. Uh, C.J. Fight got the sack there uh, right before the, the third down play. And then on fourth down, uh, on, on third down, you see Xavier Alford go down, gets hurt, goes off the field. Kenny calls timeout. Um, he said he, after the game that he wanted to see what Gus was going to do on offense. But also, it worked to their favor because Zavian Alford was allowed to come back onto the field because of the timeout and he was in on that final tackle and final stop with Ghost. Yeah I mean you can't really say enough about the impact that X has had this season and like considering where he came from last season where he wasn't able to play in games still practiced um, and then to have the culture impact that he's had is really the vocal leader of the team like full stop and then just to be able to prove day in, day out that, you know, there's a reason why you're that leader is because he's impacting on the field, you know, the, the Kansas game where he had the knockdown of the Hail Mary, the Texas State game where he had the game-clinching interception. I mean, he's just been incredible this season. And for this defense to have a leader like that, I think it's been so huge. And for them to rebound from, like, I can't remember what the final list was, but they started 6 for 11. This is UCF on third down two for two on fourth down, but just to be able to come up big when you needed to. Can't say enough about the ASU defense in this game. 
Yeah, I mean, and UCF really controlled the tempo of the game. It, it ended up being only a three-minute difference in time of possession, but you really saw it in that first quarter where UCF was substituting almost every play and running the play clock down to about 10 seconds. So that made it so that Levitt and the offense wasn't really on the field for a very long time, especially after they forced the, the punt and then they blocked the punt. And so UCF goes back on offense there. Levitt wasn't back on the field for, it felt like, 10 game minutes and then Levitt it felt like you know Kaison Brown had himself you know had an okay game not you know not scataboo numbers but 18 carries 73 yards but it felt like at some point in that third and fourth quarter you're like okay ASU if ASU is going to win this game you're going to have to pull, put the ball in Levitt's hand, hands and let him create and that's what he did very good performance from Sam uh, something that needs to be pointed out more and I, Kenny talked about it a little bit or somebody asked about it in the presser, uh, Sam hasn't really turned the ball over very much. And again, we saw that today. He was under some pressure today for the kind of the first time this year. Uh, UCF, not a bad defense. Uh, but yeah, I mean, really good performance by Sam today. Just kind of not turning the ball over, uh, getting the ball to his receivers again like he needed to. And uh, just again, I, I, it wasn't his best performance of the season. I still think that was against Oklahoma State, but it was a very good performance. And he had two rushes in the fourth quarter that to pick up third down conversions. I think we're seeing him start to be more sparing with his run attack. Obviously, what? there, there, yeah, there are some issues where he can definitely slide. But we saw it once, and hey, that's all, yeah. <laughs> and it felt great to see it. Kenny talked about it. it you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Just seeing that progress is really good to see from Sam. Um, I think he had a few deep balls that the receivers wish they could have another crack at. Um, but overall, I mean, like you were mentioning with the turnovers, he's only had four interceptions all season. I can't recall any fumbles that he's lost this season. Uh, it's just an incredible redshirt freshman performance from him throughout this season. And now this is where it gets tough, guys. The final three games of the season, they have to go to Manhattan and play not not New York, Manhattan, but Manhattan, Kansas, and play against the Kansas apple. State. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> That's what it's called. Both teams seven and two. Uh, it's going to be a five p.m. kick on ESPN. Uh, also on you know Arizona Sports app, you can listen to it there as well. We'll have the pregame show, but it gets tough here. Kansas State, BYU, Arizona to end the year. Can ASU continue this run of good form where, you know, we we can hope we hope that they can make it into the Big 12 championship game. But it's it's a tough it's a gauntlet of a schedule the final three weeks. Juve is not playing very well this season, but it's the Territorial Cup. They're going to be up for that game. That's what you see every year. So that's a tough one. And then the two upcoming games are their toughest games of the season. Um, I don't think they'll win especially next week because it's on the road but I every time I say that this team surprises me it's kind of why I went in the pregame show with ASU in this one it's just every time I doubt this team they they come out and they they perform and they make the plays when they need to uh I mean they they made plays on special teams in this game and that was the reason why they won, really. And so they'll do something like that. They'll they'll make the plays that they need, and they'll they'll win the games that I think that they won't. And so I think they win one of these two, probably. I I don't think I I on paper they shouldn't, but I think they win one of the two. And then U of A, I, I do think they win that one. So I think you're looking at a nine and three, which might get them in. It'll be tough, but. I I think the biggest thing that we have to look out for this week, guys, is the status of Cam Scadaboo. What are we going to see? The offense is just – I mean, I know they scored 35 points today, but the offense just works 10 times better when Cam Scadaboo is out there. It's going to be interesting to see this week, especially going into the Kansas State game. Yeah, I think that Oklahoma State game, going on the road and beating that team, I know they haven't won any Big 12 games yet, but to show that you can at least go on the road, it was very – an adverse – situation dealing with that weather delay I'm sure Oklahoma State was more comfortable in that locker room as they waited it out but ASU came out and dominated after that delay so I think that they've kind of figured out something on the road we'll see if that was just the Oklahoma State effect but I think they may have figured something out I'm kind of with Jesse in terms of I think they split one of these next two but I I don't think that 
anyone should be shocked if they go out and run the table the rest of the way just because of the foundation that ASU has laid so far. Yeah, and again, it's going to be even tougher because Kansas State is coming off a bye, uh, and they had just lost to Houston uh, last week. So this is their bye week, and they have to play ASU next week. We'll get into this more, um, but the quarterback play of Kansas State this year, shaky. I'm I'm just going to throw that out there, shaky. So that's where ASU can maybe take advantage of Kansas State, but we'll get more into that next week. I thought they could have gotten more pressure on the quarterback today of UCF. Freshman quarterback, he's getting the ball out quick. That could have been also an issue, but... If, the, if ASU wants to win next week, I think they got to put pressure on Johnson. Yeah, I, I think that you're totally right about uh, they could have put more on risk today. But, you know, Brian Ward loves to give those pre-snap disguises about who's coming, who's blitzing, who's not. And, you know, he had some ridiculous pre-snap looks, especially late in the game where six or seven guys are all stacked at the line. But it really felt like he was only bringing four, like 80 plus percent of the time. I think that against a running quarterback, it's like Avery Johnson is next week, it's going to be incredibly important to get the pass rush home. The former Spurs coach. Yeah, here we go. The former Alabama coach. Actually, he wasn't the Spurs coach. He was the Spurs player, Dallas Mavericks coach. There you go. Lost in the 06 finals. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, let's get around Sun Devil Athletics real quick. Wait, we're not going to talk about LASU uh, won a uh, beat a national championship winning program. That's a good one. Uh, what about the students real quick? Students, they, they did good. They, they should have stayed. Full Some starts. of them should have stayed more. Yeah, full starts. We forgot to talk about that. I need to go off on this for a little bit. Crowd, first half, <laughs> did a really, really good job uh, getting loud. Uh, even before, like, everyone had filed in, like, it was a late-arriving crowd today. And some of those full starts that Kansas – or that's next week uh, – <laughs> that UCF had uh, were before – Stands were as full as they were going to be this game. And so shout out ASU fans for uh, being loud. And I was on the field at, at the end of the game, and it was it's good vibes in here. I think ASU, you know, I look around the West Coast college at- atmospheres, and there's not that many great college atmospheres. I think ASU can become one of those. Be interesting to see the BYU game in a couple of weeks. First, they got to take on Kansas State. Um, also, shout out to the UCF fans that made their way out all the way from Orlando. It's a long trek and pretty awesome to, to see the amount of support that that national championship program is really getting, Jesse. Um, let's get into men's basketball real quick. Shaky start a little bit, you know, offense not looking great. But, hey, they got two wins, Damon. Yeah, two wins. And I think at this point in the season, you're just looking for building blocks. Obviously, it's not going to be a finished product. Obviously, what you're seeing right now on the court with ASU is not what they're going to be by the time Big 12 play comes. And you hope by that point they've figured some things out. In the second game, they've already started to figure some things out. When They they had 15 three-pointers in that game, shot 40% as a team. That's a really good mark. They hadn't hit 15 threes since the 21-22 to season. So just that in and of itself is a really good sign to see. Yeah, and, and you were talking about how impressive the defense has been as well. Yeah, the, the defense has been really good at times. The communication on switches, gambling at the right times, it feels like what a Bobby Hurley defense can be. But at the same time, the way last year's defense felt like fluky at times, the way they were running that full court diamond press, this is so much less fluky because it's forcing guys, forcing teams really into the final five seconds of shot clocks frequently. And so I think that if they're able to build upon that and like the fact that you're getting incredible defensive effort a lot of the time from Jaden Quaintance and Joson Sannon, I mean, to get that from high profile freshmen, you don't see that very often. And so that is giving me a little bit of optimism to, to what the, the team can be. Obviously, the game coming up against Gonzaga, it's going to be a low bar in terms of what we're expecting out of ASU. Gonzaga just beat a top 10 team by almost 40 in their season opener. So that's going to be a tough challenge for sure. But we've also seen Bobby Hurley win tough games like this. On the road too. Yep, on the road. And uh, also, the, like, uh, Quaintance, four and a half blocks per game in the first two games of the season. He's been good on defense. 
Like to see the offense get going a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in Gonzaga. Jesse, I want to hear your thoughts. The women's program is now 1-1, one and, one, and they lost to Arkansas State? Correct. <laughs> All right. So here I'm just going to say this. Uh, they are fun to watch on offense. Ty Skinner is back. She's looking good. Uh, their size is definitely helping them. But they gave up 100 points to Arkansas State. They lost a game to Arkansas State that they scored 96 points in. Um, Arkansas State was picked to finish second to last in their in the Sun Belt Coaches poll. The Sun Belt Coaches poll. Uh, so that honestly is unacceptable. ASU needs to, ASU needs to win it. ASU women's basketball needs to win a game against the second to last team in the Sun Belt Conference when they scored 96 points. I, I that. Full stop. Like that's that's my opinion on this. Um, you know that would this team is a storied program. Like they made tournament after tournament, two elite eights in this program's history. Like that that's just a, they need to have a standard that's better than that, in my opinion. Now let's get to the good stuff. Volleyball. Volleyball upset Kansas the other day. Wasn't really an upset. I, I would say ASU probably could have been favored in that match because they're eleventh in the country. Kansas is eighth was a home match. They beat them. Fantastic win. And then they came back on Friday and they beat Kansas State. This team only has two losses this season. They are in first place in the Big 12. They could host some tournament matches. This is the best thing going at Arizona State right now, besides the football program, which is playing pretty well. But this is the best thing going at Arizona State right now. Please get out and support this program. They deserve your support. And J.J. Van Neal has got this team cooking right now. I was there last night because, you know, it followed the women's basketball game, so I went to both. Um, and, yeah, they did a really good job last night of kind of uh, – it, it, it was two days after playing a really tough match, and they pulled out a four-setter against a team. Every team in the Big 12 is good. Uh, and, you know, Kansas State's not one of the better teams, but they're still a Big 12 opponent. And they did a really good job uh, two days after that. And uh, J.J. said some of the players were fighting through some injuries, so – and you could tell that they had played a tough match a couple days ago, and they came out and they won. And so this seemed very resilient, very fun. And if we can, real quick, let's give a quick round of applause to Jelly Sear, who reached 1,000 kills in her career, all at Arizona State, which we love to see. Fantastic. And, oh, what a bunch of losers this triathlon <laughs> team is. They couldn't win their eighth national championship in a row. Let's give it up. Still got an individual yeah. title. Yes. Yeah. Let's give it up for the triathlon team winning seven national championships in a row. Listen, that is unheard of. And this team is really good. They're going to be really good for years to come. Not time to hit the panic button yet on triathlon, guys. But, yes, congratulations to triathlon on another very successful season. Unfortunately, couldn't pull out the national championship. And, again, uh, the Gonzaga game tomorrow, men's basketball game, that's going to be on Arizona Sports, or it'll be on the Arizona Sports app. I'm not sure it's going to be on Arizona Sports. might be on ESPN 620 AM. Uh, but it, it'll, <laughs> it'll be on, uh, it, it'll be on uh, the Arizona Sports app tomorrow. So make sure you tune into that one because that's a, a big game for ASU. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to watch. Jeff Munn will be on the call, our guy, our guy. He always gives us a shout-out, so we'll give him a shout-out. Listen to Jeff's call tomorrow. It's, it's a big one. That's going to do it for this post-game edition of State of the Sun Devils. ASU wins this one 35-31 to move to 7-2 and on the season. For Jesse Morrison and Damon Allred, I'm Jeremy Schnell. We'll talk to you next week.